The vice president, well, he convened the first town hall meeting of the Kufado led government. And as a result of that, uh, we've been having many discussions on the subject because it's been dominating the discussion platforms. Uh, you can get more updates on myjohnline.com, but more so, well, we want to do some great analysis on the subject. We'll be speaking to Dr. Patrick Isuming of the University of Ghana Business School. Kujo Yangson will be doing that. But before uh, we get ready for all that, we also know that he talked about power and why we have the current challenges. And there was some great supports um, in commentary also by the Minister of Energy, Peter Amu. But uh, talking about power, apparently, uh, it sparked some concerns and sentiments among some sections of Ghanaians. And uh, already, we are already uh, confirming that angry residents of Noiseau in the eastern region have protested the incessant power cuts they were experiencing in their community. They claim the Manya Krobo town has been plunged into total darkness. And uh, the situation uh, is, uh, according to them, is uh, affecting them negatively and also affecting the economic and domestic lives. The protesters on Wednesday evening blocked the main pond to Odumasi Road and um, also bent tires to prevent cars from moving on that stretch. Well, we have uh, Kofi Siang, who is a correspondent uh, from the ground. Good morning to you, Kofi. Kofi, good morning to you. Good morning, Roland. Mm. And uh, I know that stretch very well uh, because uh, it will lead you to As Isikuma and uh, you're going forward. Uh, but uh, it would also mean that the situation may have been bad for the residents or the protesters to embark on what they did, that action. Uh, tell me, how did it go down? Well, um, it was yesterday evening around 6 when the residents started massing up uh, in the area. They claim that they have been sleeping in darkness for the past three days. Usually, uh, the point is that when it happens like that, uh, uh, there is a restoration of power from time to time. But in their case, uh, it, it, it is not. So they decided to protest uh, to the PDS so that uh, they, they, their attention can be brought to, to the situation so that they can rectify, uh, they can rectify it. But uh, as of now, this morning, the people are still on the street. And I can tell you that they are still protesting. Uh, they say they are going to protest until uh, the PDS and the government comes to their aid. And yesterday, let me tell you that uh, during the protest, they bent ties and blocked, mounted roadblocks, you know, to prevent vehicles from moving from one point of the town to the other. So it, it's a very unfortunate situation here. When you come here, the residents are still there, and uh, they are putting pressure on government to restore their lives. Mm, but since they started the whole demonstration yesterday evening, did it mean that they didn't take a break overnight? And so I uh, are just um, converging or have been there since uh, the whole period after well, this morning? Uh, some of them left, but uh, many of them were still on the street protesting. Uh, they say they want to insist that government uh, fix, fixes the problem for them before uh, they can move from the street. So until uh, the problem is resolved, they are not going back. They're protesters because they're residents. They, they should have some leadership. Do they have anybody leading them in a protest? Well, um, initially they did not. But uh, as time went on, there is a group here in the Menya Krobo area. They call them Kloma Hingwe uh, Association. There, this is a youth group that usually speak for the residents of the area. So uh, they say they have met, they have had uh, communication from the Ministry of Energy and that they are going to meet the Minister of Energy today uh, to resolve the issue. But they should know that they are not the only community or area or residences across the country experiencing uh, power cuts. Um, the, the, during their interaction, did they get to find out whether it was a localized power outage uh, or it was just part of the, the general problems that the country is experiencing? Well, Roland, they, they really appreciate the fact that there is a load shedding. Or let me, let me if, if I'm getting the word, the word right, they really appreciate the fact that there is intermittent power cuts. But their point is that uh, when there is, you know, when the lights are taken off, usually it comes back. But in their case, it is not. They have taken 
out their life for the past three days, and it has not been restored. So that is what they are protesting. Mm. Well, uh, the, the, there should be some adjoining communities also experiencing some difficulties there. Can you just pinpoint the towns or the communities that have been affected on this stretch uh, with well, pancarts? If, if you look at the, Krob the Krobo enclave, it comprises of so many Odumase Krobo, Nuasu, to Pong. That is the uh, you know adjoining communities or towns. So this, all these areas have been affected, and in fact. If you listen to, you know, the residents there, some of the comments they've been passing is that uh, because they have issues with the electricity company of Ghana and the VRE for some time now, uh, that may be the cause of the power cut. And, you know, in recent past, where the, the residents have had issues with the VRE because they insisted they did not want to pay electricity bills and the VRE and the electricity people also insisted that they have to pay electricity bills. Their case is that uh, the Krobo enclave has, you know, uh, their property was taken uh, over by the VRA uh, before the Akosomo Dam was, you know, constructed. So they insisted they did not want to pay electricity, but the VRA people also said, that is not the case, you have to pay. Mm. And, and, and no, of course, we know that there were some agreements, uh, some promises that were made to them, especially by the first um, government or the republic we had, uh, led by Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And we know that uh, over the decades, the communities have been raising issues. Uh, it looks like it may have come to a head. Um, when is the next uh, phase of the dialogue? Well, uh, the, the association, uh, which is spearheading this whole dialogue, that is the Klomahingwe Association, said they are meeting the energy minister today and that uh, they, they believe that their issues will be tackled and resolved amicably. Mm. Well, it's the mind of many people, especially ones they've not been given reasons. They've not been given reasons why the power cuts are, are ongoing, have they? No, they've not been. Well, Kofisian, please keep monitoring the situation for us because um, already... Um, Koficien is reporting that um, angry resident of Noaso in the eastern region and uh, it's just one of uh, many of the dotted communities on the bond to a Sikuma um, road that leads you to Akosombo before you get to the Noom areas and uh, many of those communities um, around um, that, that stretch and especially those in the uh, uh, Krobo enclave seem to be experiencing consistent power cuts They've been experiencing that for the last three days. The residents, as a result, hit the streets. It happened yesterday evening or yesterday night. Well, they took a break, came back this morning, and they are there. Well, we have to move on. And uh, we told you uh, we'll have some added conversation following the town hall meeting that um, was... Uh, was addressed by the Vice President of our Republic, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia. And uh, he also said that import duties on vehicles will be slashed by some 30% effective today. And we should uh, clarify um, that uh, these are for benchmark values or tariffs. And non-vehicles also will be reduced by um, some 50%. Well, let's listen or watch him. And when we return, we'll speak to those who have been affected or will benefit from this announcement. But to do so, we cannot be uncompetitive between Ghana and our next door neighbors. That, will, that is just shooting ourselves in the foot. So, to reduce the incidence of smuggling and enhance revenue, the benchmark delivery values of imports will be reduced by 50%. For vehicles, the reduction will be 30 percent. This is because vehicles already attract an amount of depreciation, which if you factor it in, it will take you closer to the 50 percent. This will be effective from tomorrow.
And uh, we also need to get um, some discussions ongoing and get some reactions. And um, joining us on the line is Ajua Ejewa. She is with WISAC, the Wholesalers, Importers and Sellers Association of Ghana. Good morning to you, uh, Madam Ejewa. Good morning. Mm. Please, can I correct our name? It's Wholesalers, Importers and Shop Owners. Okay. Union of Ghana. All right, let me get that straight again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's wholesalers, importers, importers, and shop, shop owners. Shop owners. Yes. Union. Of Ghana. Union of Ghana. Ghana, yeah. Okay. Wesak. So we have on the line Adwe yes. uh, She yes. is with the Wholesalers, Importers, and Shop Owners Union of Ghana. It's corrected, madam. Thank you. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the vice president's announcement, what do you make of it? What's the reaction in, in your community? Oh, we were happy about what he said yesterday. Uh, because we've been fighting for the benchmark values to be looked at for a very long time. But uh, what we really have wanted was he, him pegging the dollar at the port. Yes, so we are going to fill this reduction not today or yesterday like how he did say it because some of us have gotten our containers house previously and it's come to the market that the, uh, there's a big reduction at the port so people come from the market just this morning there's been a lot of arguments about how the vice president has said uh, the duty is reduced, so importers has to reduce their goods. This is going to take like a month for things to be in order. So we are really going to fill the, uh, uh, the, what the vice president said yesterday. After a month or two, we, we thank him for what he has done, and we really appreciate it. But it's left with them pegging the dollar at the port for us. Okay, we'll that, that will make us predict our business in case you, you go in for some goods and you are coming, you know, for the uh, first, like, six months, the dollar is being put, uh, pegged at the port. The, 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 they use the dollar to uh, calculate our duties. So what we were asking was we wanted the dollar to be pegged, like, if for six months, if the dollar is five cities, that would have really helped with the slashes on the uh, benchmark for the importer to feel a very uh, good impact on whatever they delivered yesterday. So we are very grateful. We know it's systematically and surely once they've tackled this, they'll come to that. So we are hoping for the best. And then when you say pegging the dollar, you mean to hedge the price? Yes, like uh, because today because I, I because come in with because, my goods. Be, because every week there's a change in the price, right? Every Tuesday. Every so Tuesday. If, for instance, okay. we have uh, you have a container coming in, and I have a container coming in, and if the uh, the benchmark is being slashed by twenty uh, fifty percent for you and fifty percent for me, and unfortunately. You get a reduced dollar rate because the day your container came, the dollar rate was down. You will benefit most than me that my container came in when the dollar was up. So if they could have merged the two together, oh, it would have been very fantastic. But we are hoping they will also listen to what we have next. Because since most of the meetings, they go in the meetings with Guta, and Guta is, I don't know, it's mostly a few importers and retailers. They have to bring on board a lot of stakeholders, which Dr. Baumia is trying to bring all the importers together next time so that we can add our uh, uh, input to it to get a, something more, more, more effective, because this is going to be effective. But if you are not lucky and your goose comes the day the dollar is not, it's, let me say, it's sick. You're not, going to, you, you're not going to enjoy this facility fully. That's what I think. And what, uh, but we are waiting to see the implementers. 
the implementers has to do things right for us to fill the pinch. So we are appealing to Mr. Crenstall and the team to really do their best so that what the vice president has said can be put into action so that things on the market can be reduced and uh, all the masses becomes happy. That's okay, so, so, so by way of um, education for all of us, including our viewers and the market that you tend to serve, the announcement seemed to have been wholesalely um, accommodated. Uh, but you are saying that it, it seemed to be a misinterpretation by the general commerce uh, market or commerce uh, population we have. So yeah. if, if we say benchmarking, which, um, what do we mean by the benchmarking which would attract the 50% on uh, one hand and then the 30% on one hand? The, the benchmarking is whereby you bring in goods and you said you bought it at five cities. And at five cities, the custom officer can say, no, this thing you brought in cannot be five dollars where you are, as you are saying. So he goes to the benchmark and there he brings the quotation, maybe if it's ten dollars, he used the ten dollars to come and calculate what you said you bought at five dollars. Because he thinks what you have showed him, uh, it's not five dollars but ten dollars so we, we we've really fought on it because you see most of the things coming from china cannot be compared to things coming from europe so you see something on the internet and it's like five dollars and somebody goes into china with the same like item to manufacture or produce and try to cut down the price to two dollars and the person brings that two dollars to the market or to customs and you say no i've seen it as five dollars and i think you are under invoice and so it should be five dollars it's quite unbearable it was re it's really collapsed a lot of businesses and we really fought at it and we've arrived so we think with what the vice president said yesterday if the implementers are going to do their job as they, the politicians have said, is going to bring a very big cut to most of people's goods that have been, uh, been all pegged at, uh, 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 used, uh, uh, the benchmark values has been used on them. So we are praying for the best. Okay, so we my next question is, how widespread or uh, how, how big a population of traders and the quantity of goods that are brought in that could attract this 50% um, benchmark um, discount, so to speak, uh, in such a way that it is going to affect prices on the market. Because um, it, it, it will mean that if you are bringing a good that is of standard, even from a market like China, and um, it, the price is what it is, then it's not going to attract that. I mean, that's the understanding I get, having spoken to many people and also listened to you. Uh, yes, but uh, since this thing came out yesterday, I have really not brought anything in to see how it's going to, how they are, they are going to work on the bank values. Because not all, not all the goods, about 80% or 70% were being benchmarked. But uh, about 30% they went on as usual, they are quoting uh, whatever they used to quote mm -hmm. for. Mm. other importers but as far as i know 70 percent of the importers uh, goods were being benchmarked okay. so a lot of importers will benefit if the implementers implement whatever the vice president has said appropriately okay uh, uh, but, <laughs> but, but, but there are concerns being raised that this is also going to open the floodgates for you, your members, to just uh, flood the market with whatever. Whilst, uh, on the other hand, government is preaching that uh, it wants to make sure that local businesses, especially in the manufacturing sector, are competitive. Okay, what I can say on that is, uh, you see, Ghana has, we haven't got any other businesses in Ghana that are buying and selling. 
And we've been pleading with Ministry of Trade, previous governments, to tackle the foreigners who, who are in retail businesses. And those Chinese people flooding our markets with uh, fake goods and the rest. And Ministry of Trade took it on themselves, and they have done a, a bit something about it, but it's not the best. If that should not happen, then uh, they have to strip, screen the market properly because the importers all over Ghana cannot be 200% uh, all, all over. Because of the benchmark, some have even fallen. So if this thing is, it, it will take time before what you are saying can come in, but they have to really work in the grounds to see what they will do about it. But yeah. as a businesswoman, what I know is the benchmark is being reduced. If I bring something and the custom puts the benchmark on it for me, he's asked to uh, go down by 50%, and I'm happy about that. That is all I know. But whatever is will affect it will be, I will blame it on the foreigners. If these foreigners, like the Nigerians, Chinese, they have been they, they are checked and controlled well in the system. I think with us the engineers they don't have any problem. Well, um, thank you very much. And um, Madam Ejewa is uh, with the with the union, and they are helping us uh, do some clarifications on many of the subject. But it, at least it's, it's important for us to know that for the imported, at least seventy percent um, of them have their goods that they bring in benchmarked. And so um, it would also mean that it would translate into a reduction in prices, or it should. Uh, but the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoudou Bami, also says, a new government policy to switch to the use of gas in energy generation uh, is a solution to resolving the erratic supply of um, uh, energy or, or power permanently. But uh, how will this work out? And uh, we have to speak to Kojopoku. Uh, he's an energy analyst, helps us uh, to look at many of these related issues on the show. Good morning to you. And um, it, it looks like this is the opportune time. You said Thursday. You're going to give us more clarifications, especially on, uh, on a letter you thought was circulating around. But um, what do you make of the vice president's um, own speech on the sector and how government is making effort to resolve uh, the energy crisis? if not the intermittent power cuts we're having currently. Uh, good morning and good morning to your viewers. Um, yes, as we are all aware, the challenges of um, intermittent power supply, because we do not have sufficient generation in the system, partly due to um, the work being going, the work going on at um, Takradi with the interconnecting for the reverse flow. It's important for us to understand what has been happening um, from the time we started going into thermal generation. We have the thermal enclave and we have the Takradi enclave. The first use of gas came about as a result of the West African gas pipeline. And that is gas coming in from Nigeria and stops at Tema and also stops at Takradi. Um, this gas has not really been reliable as forecast when the project was being undertaken. So there's always been intermittent gas supply. What then it means is that all the plants in the Tema Enclave and Takradi Enclave that uses gas cannot rely fully on the gas from Nigeria. Then we discovered our own um, petroleum product, which is the gas and crude oil. And our gas was being um, treated at Ghana Gas. But that Ghana gas gas was only being sent to the Takradi companies. In the Takradi, we don't have that many uh, infrastructure in terms of generation capacity in Takradi. We have more in Tema. Um, in Takradi, you have Tiko, Taku, Ameri, and I think the early power um, plant is coming up in Takradi. So what that does is that whenever the gas that we have SS gas, especially with the ENI plants coming on, we have SS gas, but it's all trapped in the Takradi area. You need it also to be extended to the likes of Asogli, uh, car power, so not car power, the like of Asogli, uh, Aska, and all the Sinet 
TT1PP uh, and all the other plants that are situated in Tema, you need them to also have access to this gas which is trapped in the western region. Now, you heard again that the car power plant, which came into the country as an HFO plant, in about five, six years ago, HFO was cheaper than gas. But because the crude oil prices keep going up, HFO has now become a bit expensive, so it's not as cheap as gas. It's not, as, it's not cheaper than gas, it's now expensive than gas. So now the government decided, okay, let's move the car power plant from Takrade, from, from Tema to Takrade, so it can also take advantage of the gas that we have trapped. The amount of gas we have in the country right now is enough to basically give full security to almost all the plants we have. That is important because what that does is that that means that we can now fuel all these plants that we have, whether in Tama or Takrade, to be able to now be, give us full generation capacity. But uh, at the end of the day, we know that this reverse flow is important. But while this was being done, uh, we're told, even you have told us, um, that those plants would have been in a position to use alternative uh, energy uh, sources or supply. Is that true? Yes, they could have. Um, but normally, a switchover is not as simple. Yes, most, some of these plants are dual fuel, so they can either use gas or HFO or light crude. But it takes some time to clean it up, do some small maintenance before you put alternative fuel. How many in the months? System. Sorry? How many months? Oh, not months. No, it doesn't take months. No, it doesn't take months to switch over. It takes days to be able to clean. It's just basically cleaning the system okay. and doing some slight maintenance before you put alternative fuel to the system. It's not months, it's days. So, 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 know, to be able so, so can I then conclude that we don't have the alternative fuel and as a result of that, that's why we're experiencing the power cuts? No, we, the alternative, you see, let me clarify something. Most of these companies, Car Power, uh, Aska, and Asogli, and all, they are all private companies. Okay? They have a power purchase agreement with government to produce electricity. And they have a certain benchmark prices at which they produce this electricity. If government calls on them to generate power and they do not generate the capacity agreed with government, there are penalties on them. Again, as a business that is set up in Ghana, they want to generate electricity and make money out of it. So it is not up to government to dictate whether they should use alternative fuel or they should use gas. The only reason that government is playing a role in all these things is because well, that is why we keep coming back to that nagging problem, which is the underlying factor of liquidity. If, let's say, Asobri has money, he's being paid his bills, he can generate up to 560 Maybe when he's using a light crude, he can only do maybe 300, 360. But what happens is that when government needs him to power, he will power. Government doesn't have to dictate to him what fuel he uses. Asokli would deliver what he can deliver to the system. So why, why have they not done that? Because government has not, or, or, or government owes them, that, or the institution owes them. That's why I'm them. saying that it goes back to the issue of liquidity. That's where the liquidity issue comes in. Exactly. That these companies are owed by government, and government is not paying what is, the government owes them. So why is, that the, why is that, that the vice president, why is that the vice president didn't tell uh, the town hall meeting that? Well, my brother, you have to ask the vice president that. I can answer what what? My, 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 why vice presidents will not tell uh, Ghanaians why if they owe. Look, government owe Jenkos. It is not a secret. You don't need a vice president to come and tell you. It's, we, we keep saying that, look, have you heard anybody come to deny that, that government owe Jenkos? We all know that there is a, a energy sector indebtedness. Everybody knows that. Mr. Kojopoku, you see, perhaps, uh, didn't we need the vice president just sincere, sincerely come to say, look, we've had uh, debts that have been outstanding, even uh, predating our transition into office, and we've accumulated more, but uh, we feel this is the better way to go, and so as a result of that, that's why we're having all this. So because a government of Ghana definitely will be partly to blame, whether it's... Uh, I, I, it's, it's me, uh, do you want me to answer on behalf of the vice president? If you can, why not? No, why? How can I? I'm not a government official. I don't speak for the vice president. How can I answer on behalf of the vice president? I'm telling you that the situation on the ground is that 
every private company, when you want a product from a private company, that private company, be it under contractual obligation, can only supply you what he can under the liquidity situation he's in. The problem that uh, when government needs the power as and when he needs it, these private companies are not able to give government the full capacity is because they have these private companies have liquidity challenges based okay. on the fact that government owe and they've not paid. Okay. But you see, let's not make this owing as a result of a present situation. It is an ongoing problem which exactly. every government has exactly. to resolve. Exactly. Some of us are advising that, look, can we resolve this indebtedness in the energy sector once and for all? The ESLA was benchmarked to do that. The ESLA has not been able to do that. Okay, so we need to find a pragmatic approach to how we resolve and get rid of this nagging issue. In the last couple of weeks, uh, sorry, in the last couple of days, some money has started rolling out to the IPPs for uh, for, uh, for the generation that they've done in a couple of months. So we are hoping that they are getting some money now, but they are still heavily indebted. So that is something that you should call a government official and ask him that, yes, I could just who have said that, look, this is indebtedness which is good. And let them say that, look, no, we don't owe us or we don't owe Kappa. Mm. Of course they do. All right. We have to end the conversation, Mr. Kujopoku. Uh, but I'll call you on the sidelines. We have other discussions to attend to. So I'll do that personally. But uh, thank you for your time.